Fishery stock assessments allow us to demonstrate that we can fish in our waters sustainably. They provide the public with evidence that harvesting fish at a sustainable level still leaves enough mature fish in the sea to keep our fish populations viable and thriving. And they provide industry with future sustainable catch targets so they can plan their businesses. Every year we know how much fish has been legally caught, but what we really want to know is how many fish there will be in the sea to catch next year, known as abundance. We also need to know the rate at which fish die from fishing activities, known as fishing mortality, and the rate at which fish die naturally, as well as how many mature fish there are to reproduce and replenish the stock, which is known as spawning stock biomass. This information allows the fishing industry and managers to plan ahead so that their fishing activities the following year remain sustainable. All of this information can be calculated using a method called virtual population analysis, which is commonly used to assess stocks of bony fish like haddock. Because we can't physically remove all the fish in the sea to count them, virtual population analysis uses simple maths to reconstruct a virtual population of fish which is a good approximation of what the actual fish population looks like. Virtual population analysis uses some simple building blocks. Firstly, fish are born, grow and die. If we can work out how many fish are born each year, known as recruitment, and how many fish die each year, known as mortality, then we can estimate how many there will be next year. This is the basis of a simple stock assessment model. Fish die for two main reasons, fishing and natural deaths such as predation and disease. Estimating death rates, or mortality, is really important to managers. If they know total deaths and compare it to total births, then they can see if a population is increasing or decreasing, and this helps them to set harvest limits each year. Some of these things can be hard to measure in the ocean, especially natural deaths. Luckily, there are some general relationships between the lifespan of a fish and its natural mortality. For example, if a fish lives for 100 years, it has a low natural mortality, but if it lives for two years, it has a high natural mortality. Scientists also need to understand the size and age structure of fish stocks, because then they can estimate how many new fish are entering the population which ones will get caught, which ones are breeding, and which ones are dying. Groups of fish born around the same time are called cohorts, and age is measured from a fish's length and its ear bone, known as a otolith. Once we know how old fish are, scientists can then track age groups of fish through time to understand how the fish populations are changing. If there is good recruitment one year, i.e. lots of fish are born, then this strong year class is often reflected in catches in the years to follow. In virtual population analysis, scientists add up all the fish that were landed of each age group, plus all the fish that died naturally for a particular age. And that estimates how many fish were in the sea in a particular year. This process of simple accountancy lets scientists predict how many fish there will be in the sea in future so that they can provide advice on catch levels that are sustainable and allow fish stocks to replenish themselves so that fishers can continue to operate profitably for years to come.